What's up, what's up, what's up, Bitcoiners? Okay, so this video, I'm just going to run through uh, how to infer one rep maxes on sheets using an RPE modifier. Uh, this is from one of the coaches that I work with. I uh, was interested in knowing how I determine these values. Also, how that how I use estimated rep max to track and modify programs. Maybe something I will make in another video. But I thought if I was going to explain it to him, I may as well just make some video out of it. So I'm going to put this up on YouTube. I will make this uh, shared on my Google Drive. So it will you will not have editing uh, rights. So do not ask for editing rights as everyone always does. What you need to do when you click on the link, make copy. And that will create a copy in your Google Drive. Or you can simply download it as an Excel open document, whatever format you want. If you want to be able to edit it, obviously, open document or Microsoft Excel uh, is what you need to use. So. Uh, first of all, before we get into the RPE modifying aspect, uh, I'm using the Brzezicki 1RM calculation as it's the one that I use most often. It's also the one that I find to be the most accurate. It's also fairly easily determined. And um, so it's the weight lifted divided by 1.0278 minus 0.0278 times the number of repetitions in that format. So when we look at the cells, um, this is the rep. This is the first equation that we're using to determine one rep max. Uh, so, a, an RP is basically an inference of maximum uh, based off how you felt the rep went. So it stands for rate of perceived exertion. It's an internal measure, so it has to be given by the athletes and only the athlete. The coach saying that wasn't this RP or that RP isn't really. Uh, an accurate or, or a justified comment because it's an internal measure. The athlete may be over or under shooting the RPEs, but that should be determined by the athlete, not to, to, to driven by the coach because that's going to invalidate the metric. It is an internal measure and only valid if it is used as such. If you want to use an external measure to, to use this process, you need to use bar speed or some objective measure that you can infer from, and then you can collect data and then when someone comes to failure in a squat or a bench or a deadlift, you can say your failure is around this mean meters per second. But when we're using RPE, it's down to the athlete to determine what that is. If you want to go and look at how to individualize this kind of table, you can look at uh, Rack's, Rack's trainer systems, uh, strength by science probably. And I know the strength athlete, they have some work on this. So you can go and check that out. This is normative data. Uh, so if you go on like RPE, calculator.com, which is a really good tool if you want to use it to determine your one rep max based off RPE. This, these are the values you'll get. These are just normative values. Uh, cool. I, I'm not entirely sure where they got, probably cohort data. So just a bunch of different uh, studies or a study that's done this. I'm not entirely sure where the data comes from, but these are the values you'll come up for. You know, these are the values you'll come across if you look for it. So one rep max at 10 is 100% of your 100% of your capability, cannot do any more. Nine and a half uh, means that you might have an R rep in the tank. So that's your modifier for that. Nine means you definitely have another rep in the tank, which means you had two reps, which that would also correspond to your two rep max. So two at 10 is the same value. Eight and a half, maybe had two left. Eight definitely had two left. And guess what? It corresponds to your three RM. So I basically used the decrement of the of um, the RPE. So as it goes down here, and how it corresponded to here, to work out uh, two RPE six, what I call the fatigue multiplier. So it's basically I reverse engineered those values to come up with a multiplier. So if you're saying that you're doing X reps at 10, your fatigue multiplier is 100%. So your one rep maximum that this formula comes up with is 100%. Uh, you just get the one rep max value. If you're saying it's at nine and a half, you get a 2% bump in your estimated capabilities. If it's at nine, you get a 4% bump and all the way down to 16% bump if you're saying that it's at six. I don't go below at six um, because it, because RPs pretty much become hogwash under there for determining one rep max. And to be honest, anything from eight and below is about FA. Eight and above is fairly accurate. Nine is very accurate. Ten is obviously 
10 can't argue with that unless you're bullshitting the RPEs. Um, it's pretty accurate. Seven I'll take, six of the push I'll look at, five not interested, hogwash. So if you're trying to track RPEs at, on like a 10 at six, it's going to be bullshit. But if it's 10 at nine, it's relatively accurate. Again, with the one rep max calculations, the further away you get from one RM, the more spurious it is. So if you're trying to track higher rep sets um, using RPEs, it gets a bit trickier. I mean, it's still a measure. And if your athlete or you are fairly honest with your uh, recording of RPEs, then it should be fairly accurate, at least consistent, so you can track. Um, but you can get some pretty whack 1RM calculations based off higher rep sets. So anyway, this is the table. So this is our reference table for the sheet. So here we have our estimated max calculation. So we put anyone that's logging their workout, they put the load lifted, reps done, and the RP that was at. This cell will then work out their one rep max. We have a rounding here, so I'm rounding to two and a half. For the purposes of this video, I'm going to round to one, um, but we can round to whatever value we want. So in this cell, we are determining we are determining the RPE. So if I get a 10, the lookup will report, report 10. If it gets six, it will report um, six. <laughs> it will report this value. So it's basically this, this lookup is telling this lookup what to look up. <laughs> it's going to look up a bunch. So when this goes, it looks up here. So when this cell comes for a reference, it says here, if I put five it's going to return a null value not working if i give it something in the table to work with six it says i'm looking up cell nine six is cell nine and that has given us 116 percent multiplier if i tell it to look up eight rp8 it's going to look up cell five that gives us the corresponding multiplier on that cell. So basically, it has a matrix of these values, um, nine values that it can then tell the multiplier, put this value in here, and then this then multiplies the one rep max by that multiplier. So this is the fatigue index. This is the lookup table that looks up the fatigue index. And that's how it works. So when I put in 180, I do six reps, that says RP9, I get that value back. I say it's 10, I get that value back. I say it's six, I get that value back. I say it's five, I get nothing, so I'm not interested in that. I say 11, I get nothing, so I'm not interested in that. And that's how it works. Nice and simple. You, of course, can uh, modify these if you want to personalize your fatigue multiplier. If you have um, your own personalized RPE table and you want to utilize that to, to reverse engineer the fatigue multiplier, be my guest. If you want to use something that's relatively accurate with lifters, um, this works jolly well. Okay, thank you very much. I uh, hope you've enjoyed. Any comments, questions, leave them below. Like and subscribe because it helps the algorithm apparently. That's what all these motherfuckers say. Thank you very much for watching. If you want more programming videos like this, this kind of content I can do real easy. So if you want more, you can ask for more. Daddy shall deliver. Otherwise, like and subscribe. Thank you very much. Uh, enjoy the rest of your day and fuck off.